right, you don't have to write this down. But remember at the beginning of the year when we said we were dealing with equations and then I'd throw an equation on the board that had a fraction in it and y'all would all grumble and go, hmm. I said, it's okay because we don't have to deal with those fractions. We can eliminate fractions in an equation because you're creating an equivalent equation that's still going to give you the same answer, all right? So, just as a refresher, if we were going to solve this equation, first question is we need to recognize because in order to eliminate the fractions, we are going to multiply every term by the common denominator. So I need to make sure that you know how many terms there are. How many terms are in this equation? Three. Three. Okay, and what makes a term or what separates terms is a big plus sign, a big minus sign, or a big equal sign that's out in the middle of nowhere just standing alone. Okay? That's what separates your terms. So there are three terms in this equation. So I'm going to have to multiply three things times a common denominator. Well, what's the common denominator for four and two? Four. Okay, now remember. The purpose of doing this is to eliminate the fractions, okay? In this first fraction now, I'm going to look at it individually because this is one fraction. Can you reduce this fraction? Yes. Four and two can be reduced, right? And so you simply have two X and no more fraction. In the second term, can you reduce that fraction? Four and four cancel, and so you're left simply with three. And in the last term, there is no fraction to reduce, but that's okay. Because in order to keep the equation equivalent, we have to do the same thing to all pieces. So I've got five times four, which is 20. And now I have a very simple equation that can be solved by simply adding three to both sides and then dividing by two. And a lot of times, your answer will be a fraction because you started off with fractions. But that's okay because as long as I don't have to work with those fractions all during the problem and I just get one at the end, we're good. So if we add 3 to both sides and then divide both sides by 2, we get 23 halves. Now you can leave your fraction improper but it needs to be reduced. Well, 23 halves is reduced. You can't do anything else with it. Okay? Now, do y'all recall this? Good. Okay? Also remember how we solve quadratic equations. What's a quadratic equation? What's in a quadratic equation? Oh, yeah. You've got an x squared term in it, okay, or higher, but it's higher than an x term. There's an x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, whatever. And remember the way we solve these where we set the whole thing equal to zero. We factor if it can be factored, and then we solve for the missing variables. What if it can't be factored? What was another way we had for solving the quadratic equation? The formula. You also have the quadratic formula. So if it can't be factored, you can use negative b plus or minus the square root of, say it with me now, b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay? All right, God bless you. So when I see this equation and I recognize right off that it's got r squared in it, I know I need to set the whole thing equal to zero. Okay? So that means I need to take this negative 2 and get rid of it on this side <coughs> and bring it over here. All right? Now that I've set it equal to zero, if I can factor the trinomial, then I will factor it. Can you? What are factors of two that add up to one? Factors of 
Factors of two are two and one, and two and one never add up to one. Okay, so no, this can't be factored, but that's okay, because we have our quadratic formula. Now, we're not going to finish this off and solve it. I'm just trying to remind you, but what is B? The coefficient of R. The number in front of R is B. What is A? The number in front of R squared, and C is the constant, 2. Okay, so if I was going to plug this stuff in, I would have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 over 2 times 1. Agree? Two. Which two? This two? Oh, C. Yeah. That's C. Yes. All right, and then you would work it out, but we're not going to go because that's just solving a problem. All right? But I want us to remember how to do that. Another thing we need to remember that we've already learned is placing restrictions on denominators when there is a variable in the denominator. Who can tell me why we want to do that? But why do we want to say what x can't equal? Why do we want to restrict x if it's in the denominator of a fraction? What are we trying to avoid? We're trying to avoid the denominator equaling 0 because then it's undefined. Okay? That's what we're trying to avoid. So we've got eliminating fractions and equations by multiplying by a common denominator. Solving quadratic equations by setting equal to zero and factoring or using the formula. And making sure we know what our restrictions are because now we're going to figure out what can x equal. And if I said x cannot equal three halves and I solve the equation and I get x equals three halves, what's the answer? No solution because it can't equal that. All right? And by knowing our restrictions, that saves us from having to go back and check. Because sometimes we're going to get two answers. They might both work. They might not. Okay. How many terms are in this equation? Three. I have fractions. It's an equation. I can get rid of them. How? multiply all three terms by the common denominator. Now, this is the test we just took. What's the common denominator for 28, z plus 2, and 4? 28 and z plus 2. Okay? So I'm going to multiply every one of these by 28 and z plus 2. I'm not going to multiply the denominators by anything. My goal here is to get rid of the denominator. Now, if you look at each term individually, because this is a single fraction with no addition occurring, it's all multiplication, can you reduce something here? Doesn't 28 divided by 28 equal 1? So I don't have a fraction anymore. And all I have to do is distribute... 9 to z plus 2, which gives you 9z plus 18. Is everybody with me or are you lost or sleeping? Okay, in the second fraction, what can, what can reduce? What can cancel? z plus 2. And so all I'm left with is 3 times 28, which is 84. On the other side of the equal sign, how can you reduce that fraction? 